Let's get the cast and creators out here. First of all, creator Jonathan Nolan. Greg Plegeman. Mr. Jim Caviezel. The great Michael Emerson. Kevin Chapman. Sarah Shahi. And last but not least, the lovely Amy Acker. So Jonathan, let's start off uh, with the question of uh, why create this show? What was going through your mind, uh, besides paranoia? <laughs> uh, it turns out Which it turns out you were right. I know, I know. You, you keep telling your wife that. I was right, honey. Um, it, it was actually all an elaborate scheme to try to get the government to have, pay us residuals. <laughs> um, no, we were interested in, uh, I, I, I was interested in surveillance. Um, and then interested in the idea of what happens with all that information. What if you had access to that information and you were in a position to, to do something with it? Well, you know, I've he I heard you interview before and you make the point that, you know, like probably 99% of this audience is giving out more information on themselves than the CIA could have collected 20 years ago, uh, the top guys there. And it's just kind of crazy. People don't think about it. And you've kind of made people think. I know when I walk around now, I'm constantly looking for cameras. I'm completely paranoid. <laughs> All right, the, the information's working in funny ways. I read an article the other day that described Mark Zuckerberg as being at the head of the world's largest spying agency. And I think yeah. there's, there's something to that. Well, you know, and there's constantly their questions. But now, of course, we find out that the machine really does exist. <laughs> it, it does. Although I think our, our, our machine uh, is a whole lot more efficient than PRISM. <laughs> Yours is a little, but who knows? Maybe, maybe they're spitting out numbers too, relevant or non-relevant. It's possible. If so, someone in the NSA is laughing every Tuesday at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> do you get, uh, where do you get your information? I mean, uh, you know, do you have consultants for all of this? Think, Greg. Greg, Greg, question for you. I feel a little bit like the NSA chief right now. <laughs> Standing before Congress, it's just amazing. Because um, again, it, we're not that far off at all. There's really nothing in it that's science fiction now. Uh, no. Uh, we have a technical consultant on the show named Tony Camarino, who's is absolutely fabulous. Uh, he's, he was an Iraqi interrogator in the Air Force as well. Um, but a lot of the things that we get, uh, fortunately, are, are falling right from the news. Yeah. Uh, there's nothing, every one of the writers is constantly sending information back and forth. I think uh, we just found out uh, yesterday or the day before that. Um, Huawei, one of the major uh, technological companies in the world, is uh, probably spying for the Chinese, and they knew it all along. And it's just, uh, if you look back on a number of episodes that we've done, it's really easy to get inspiration from those. Uh, one thing I want to say, though, is I, I just, you could tell from that reel up there just how amazing our, our cast and crew is, and I just want to thank all these guys for coming. Yes. Well, and talking about the cast, I mean, I think you guys have assembled a great cast and it keeps changing and building as the story does and we're working in more people and we're building a big team. And I love what's going on uh, in the police department and we've got a dirty cop on our hands now. Or not, you know, but the, what's great about it, it's shades of gray on this show. Like, nobody's completely right. Nobody's com Even which, when you guys are doing, going out to help somebody, like the guy who was laundering money in the casino, he's a money launderer and you gave him a restaurant, Michael. How dare you? <laughs> But, you know, it's that sort of thing. So how do you feel about your character uh, changing now and becoming uh, a, a dirty cop, or not? I mean, it was years ago, but he still, he, he could become that, and where the show is going now with all of this. I, I, I like to refer dirty. to him as conflicted. Not conflicted, dirty. okay. <laughs> No, it's great. I mean, I, I, I think that Fusco is now coming back to the once heroic image of himself, and, and it's really nice to see him kind of... Um, come into the fold and, 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 and get back to the thing that I think once drove him to be a cop. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool to take don't that Don't get too turn. comfortable. Don't yeah, get right. I, I had a feeling that was coming, Greg. I mean, uh, Jonah, excuse me. Well, talk about Gray. Amy, I love your character because we're just not sure where, you know, sometimes I'm like, she's doing the right thing. And you know what? You're, everybody says she's kind of mean, but I think she's having fun with it. Uh, you seem to be having fun with it. Oh, it's 
great. I mean, every time I read a script, I just am like, I get to say that? <laughs> so, um, but I don't think she's mean. It's just if people don't do what she tells them to, then she gets upset. <laughs> there certainly I think can. We favor. all identify with that. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, Sarah, your uh, your character Shaw is awesome. Everybody, look. Yeah, I quickly became a fan favorite. And uh, where do you see your character going now that you've sort of left the agency and? Uh, and what's she going to be doing next? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. That's a good question. It's, it's another Shades of Grey. It, it, it be... is, it is. You know, the thing that I love the most about her is her unpredictability and the fact that she really could go anywhere. Um, you know, we talk about her as being the, uh, the female Jason Bourne. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at this point, yeah, she kind of is a, a man with no country. But um, these guys have taken her in and, and given her some duties. Uh, Michael Emerson, love your character. Thank I, you. I love you. Lost, of course. Uh, great work. But what I'm loving about this season is you're out and about. Or last season, you were out and about more. And uh, I love that. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's fun for me and for Mr. Finch to get out of the library and, you know, get, get out there and play <laughs> spy a little bit. Yeah, and we've learned a lot about your character this season, where his injuries came from, and that was such an emotional scene. Uh, yeah, it's, ni it's nice to have a backstory, and it, it, I think the audience likes to know more about these characters. It, it, it's, it's, fine to be, yeah. it's fine to be mysterious, and I think they still are, but it, it lends, I think, poignancy and complexity to the storytelling, and it engages you, you know, you feel something. Well, well, I also think the guys do it. It's a great job of not throwing something out there to become a mystery. We're going to learn in time. You know, you don't want all the answers right away, and it's not like you've got all these crazy mysteries that need to unravel. Right. I, I think the writing team is so smart because they, they seem to know instinctively the pace at which to dole out the goods, you know, because you don't want it all at once. It, and no. it's, uh, it's, it's a part of the craft of writing a long-running show, I think, and they're doing very well. Do you think next season you'll be out and about more again? I, I'm, I'm just happy to be there. It's <laughs> get, get, yeah, get out of the library more. I mean, file that under careful what you wish for, because <laughs> yeah. you know, then, then I, I may be on a broiling street corner in a three-piece wool suit all day. And, and, and then you think, God, the library is really a nice set. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be shooting that now out on the street <laughs> yes. in a wool suit. Uh, Jim, your character, it, your a character is probably, probably the most consistent. I mean, it's sort of in his actions and where he is, and, uh, and it doesn't, he, you know, he, he, he jumps around a little bit, but he doesn't change much, and how do you play that? I just know I'm right all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I do that too, but it doesn't work the same for me. <laughs> so what's the most fun about the show for you? Uh, I, I just said uh, the, the writing. It's all about the writing. Mm -hmm. and, the, and these guys, what they do, you know, is just, you know consistently the team of writers. Um, and uh, just uh, to me, uh, you know, sometimes it's on the nose. Sometimes it's very poetic. Uh, it's done in a it always makes you think. very, very uh, linear, but non-linear. Well, speaking of the cast and everything, uh, Jonah, don't you have some uh, casting news? Oh, yeah, very excited. We, we announced, just wanted to make sure everyone here knew at the end of the season, we announced that Sarah Shaw, he would be joining the team at Shaw for next season. Awesome. Uh, we also like to welcome Amy Acker to the show on a regular basis. Today. Series regular. Uh, let me ask you guys real quickly, how do you deal with uh, Bad Robot and, and it's obviously Bad Robot Productions, everybody knows, Brian Berkey, Kathy Link, how do you deal with them and where do they, how interactive are they with you guys? Uh, they're, they're watching us right now. <laughs> I know, Brian. Very, very carefully. Uh, we have a lot of guns. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bad Robot, JJ, Berkey, uh, Kathy, Athena, Steve, the whole team there, that's, uh, it's, it's an incredible, incredible family. 
sort of an extended family for us, and they've been there from the very beginning, helping us build the show uh, and bring all this incredible production value and this incredible cast together. It's just, a, it's an amazing company they built there. One of the other things I love about the show, I mean, everybody, if you're not up to date, I mean, I, I highly suggest watching every episode, but if you don't, if you miss one, it's not, you, you can get by it and you, you no, can no, get No, 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 you have to watch every single episode. <laughs> <laughs> Available on iTunes. <laughs> All right, I think we should go to the audience now with some questions. We have some people lined up somewhere. Is the show rooted in science fiction? I, I'm unabashed about the fact this is a science fiction show. I'm a huge genre fan. I don't think I've ever worked on anything and probably never will work on anything that couldn't come here to Comic-Con and be celebrated here, uh, hopefully. Uh, I'm a, I, I, I think, uh, as Ralph pointed out, Part of the reason the science fiction community may not have embraced it is because they sensed that it was actually true, it turns out, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but we, we do like the science fiction aspect of the show, the cyberpunk aspect of the show. We aim to, uh, now that reality has caught up with us, we aim in uh, the third season to push out a little bit further out into that, uh, that space. Jonathan, how was directing your first episode? Uh, I'd, I'd love to direct more. It was, uh, I mean, it's cheating a little bit when you have a... Uh, well, Jonah, you had such a great experience with me. I did. Have, you know. Fantastic right, experience. You know. um, it's You're welcome. It's cheating. <laughs> 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 it's cheating when you have this incredible cast, this incredible crew who, who you know, made the show 30 times in a row. Uh, they, make you, they make you look awfully, awfully good. But uh, I had a great, great time. And we had always wanted narratively... To, to, to pull a bit of a departure episode and jump out onto the other side of our story. So very, very, very glad that everyone enjoyed it, and we hope to do uh, some more of that in the future. Something that I think you guys did great was the season finale. I, I really loved it. I mean, you, you brought everything together, but sort of atypical. You know, you gave us that moment, moment of everybody in the room and where's the machine and everything. I just want to see how, just going down the line, how the cast, uh, starting with you, Amy, felt about the finale. I mean, did you feel... You were in a good place with that? You better say you liked it. <laughs> I think Jonah is brilliant and it was great. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was super excited. Just, uh, you know, when we're doing the show, we don't really know what's coming up. So we yeah. get the scripts and it's kind of like opening a present. And then you get to see what's happening the same way that you guys do when you're watching it. So I think, I, I mean, I feel like everyone's going to have a similar answer, but I, I, I think we were all really excited that it, it came to that ending and then to see where they're going to bring it from that point. And do you know anything where it's going? Do you have any script yet? No. Jonas says no. <laughs> How about you, Sarah? If I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> I'd be honored. <laughs> but you'd like that. <laughs> I'd like that. Um, hey, now. Uh, no, you know, yes. As Amy said, um, um, I thought it was fantastic and amazing, and, and I'm going to echo her sentiment again. Um, when I get the script, it's the, it's, I, I get the same feeling. You know, I'm, I'm very new to the team, and, and um, the things that I get to say and the things that I do, and, and, the, and I, I thought it was very clever the way in which they did incorporate me into the team. That, you know, as Michael was saying, you, you don't want to give in your, your goods too soon, and uh, I think they found a very clever way to very slowly make me a part of this, and, and um, you know, to be a part of that finale was fantastic, and again, yeah, I mean, I, I read these pages and these lines and go, holy, SHIT, I get to say that, you know? Do you have anything going next season, Kevin, where you feel you want your character to go? There isn't too many places my character hasn't been. Let's start with that. <laughs> <laughs> or stay for a while. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it, it's really nice to, to, as I say, have that, that sense of duality with the character. And, um, you know, I, I'm just really, like a lot of you folks here today, I'm sure, just blown away by this NSA stuff that's going on yeah. and how it runs, you know, with our show. And, um, I, I even approached Jonah about possibly changing the name to the Real Housewives of, of, uh, of Interest. <laughs> now that we're a reality show. The but, real uh, world. No, it really is. It's really, uh, it's, been, it's been quite amazing to, uh, to see the parallels and see our show mentioned. Right. It must yeah. be fun to have that attention on the show exactly. in, in, in an important way and yeah, say, hey, absolutely. these guys were first out with this. Yeah, absolutely. Do the actors give suggestions for their characters? 
Yes. One of the actors, right? Michael, you want to take that? Of course, we're always happy to receive suggestions. Absolutely, with open arms, totally. We're supposed to get a laugh. In answer to your question, sir, uh, yes, it, it does work that way. Where the, uh, uh, you know, I, I think all the actors, and they can speak for themselves, of course, but um, uh, there have been lots of times when um, the writers, well, actually, you guys don't ask me anything. <laughs> Now I think about it. Wait a minute. We, we had to stop soliciting but, ideas because Chappie kept suggesting that Reese gets killed and Fosco becomes the, <laughs> the star. You've been blocked from the writer's that's a, room. That's new this fall, the Fosco. <laughs> but the writers do make themselves very available to the actors. And, and you know, even though they're, you know, it's, it's, it is their words, um, they are very open to everything. And it does feel like a collaboration. Um, so it, that, that's good, yeah. I, if I could jump in a little bit on that, I think the, the fun of the collaboration, our writers always go to set when it's time to produce their episode, uh, whether they want to or not. I know it's 100 degrees. Um, but three seasons in, whatever assumptions Greg and I had about where this story would go, you get this really fantastic feedback loop that sets up when you have the privilege of working with actors as talented as these ones. Their choices and their ideas inform you, even on a, on a subliminal level. You're getting cuts back, you're getting takes back, and realizing that, you know, that, that the character's been taken in a direction you didn't anticipate. And that's, that's really the great pleasure of the collaborative nature of television and film, is that you don't, you know, you're not just a little petty despot in a room dictating what your characters do. You're collaborating, you're working with extremely talented people, and so there, that, that, that give and take informs where the narrative goes. And I can think of you know, several op sort of moments when our narrative has shifted because of performance. Absolutely, and just to add to that, you know, um, you know, as we were considering where, for example, Finch's character was going and, and the love of his life, and you know, we, we reached out to Michael to ask him if, you know, if he would, wouldn't be opposed to a, his wife actually playing the role, and he, and he wasn't, and, and you can see, it, just phenomenal work. I mean, um, Jim's chemistry uh, with Paige Turco's character, Jim's, Jim's chemistry with Siraji has for, forced that relationship between Reese and Carter into such an interesting place um, that, that's going to culminate this year in, so, in something really fantastic. Uh, we just feel like oftentimes the actor informs us in terms of how they, they react with a character. Michael, does Finch purposely use British pronunciation? Am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's a new idea to me. I mean, I'll have to go back and watch a few episodes. Yeah, I guess Mr. Finch has a, a somewhat formal way of expressing himself and maybe a larger than average vocabulary. But, uh, no matter what it, you. Go ahead. It, it may be a kind of a subliminal hangover from my stage days or something like that. But, I, I, you know, I, I relish a character that has language gifts. So I. Probably that's something that's happened between me and the writers. They'll, they'll dish it to me and they'll see that I enjoy it, and so we, we keep batting it back and forth. Michael, what was it like working with your wife? I, I don't get to play many romantic parts. I, I don't think I've ever had a love, <laughs> which is a mystery to me. But I, I, I've never had a proper love scene with anyone on camera except my own wife. <laughs> And it's not, and you would think, oh, well, that, that would be like falling out of bed. It would be so easy. But it's, it's actually not. It's actually tricky to do a, an intimate scene with someone that you are regularly intimate with because you can't project character onto them. I have to keep erasing her wifeness from, from my mind so that I can machine. think of her as a character that I don't sleep with every yeah. night. <laughs> so it's an interesting acting problem. I, I'm glad you touched on that. <laughs> What is it like working with Bear, the dog? How do I answer that? You know, there's that old canard in show business that you don't work with children and animals. And, and that there's a practical sense to that because you can never win your scene because the audience's eye will always travel to the innocent and craftless child or animal. <laughs> because there's no acting going on, and that's really attractive. So it's, it's a lesson to us all, I, I'm sure. But I, I like our 
our dog actor, Boker is the, is the dog's real name. I have a dog at home that's one-tenth that size. So it, I, I struggle to, to manage so large and willful an animal as, as Boker is, but the scenes turn out great. And I, I just hope Boker will keep me on the show. The dog refused to come to Comic Con, I'm sorry. <laughs> they stop me on the street and they say, uh, I, I saw the show last week, it, it was good, but where was the dog? <laughs> How will the machine continue to evolve? If you could, if you could let us know what, to, you know, what, what, what happens next, we would be incredibly grateful. <laughs> I'm, I'm, no. I'm with you, though. I thought that, to me, the most poignant thing that's ever been on the show is that idea of the machine being somehow sentient, independent, pitiable, orphaned. I, I thought, what, what a great notion that is, that, that we could have our, our, to, to have our heartstrings tugged at by the plight of a disconnected artificial intelligence. I, I thought that was a great stroke. So in terms of poignancy, it would go the dog and then that. <laughs> um, we, we, I remember very early on the development um, of, the, of the show, I had been told at some point by someone smarter than me that in order to get a show on, on television, you had to kind of hide what it was actually about and pretend it was about something else. So I was sort of going down that line a little bit. And then I got a few meetings in, and the team that I developed it with uh, at, um, at Bad Robot, the studio, and the network, very smart. At some point, someone very smart asked a question. I was like, what's this really about? And I sort of thought, OK, I'll take a chance. I said, it's about artificial intelligence and the way in which we're going to interact with it, and the way in which it will slip into the world unnoticed until you know, it, that, that it, won't, it won't sort of land with a giant thud, that it'll, it'll creep in in ways that we didn't anticipate. And that, yeah, by the time you realize it's here, it will have already been sort of so meshed into it, the fabric of, of, of our society and what we do, that we'll, we'll barely recognize it. Um, we'll barely understand what's happened. If you think of Wikipedia as a form of artificial intelligence, if you think of the Constitution as a piece of software, if you think about the ways in which all these things start sort of coming together. Um, I was fascinated by that question, and luckily it seems like the audience was too. So we very much want to continue pushing in that direction, asking those questions, and the sort of philosophical component of the show, as you said. Sarah, do you consider Shah a role model for women? I mean, I don't know if I am a role model, but it, that would be nice, and, and I hope I'm setting a good example. And, you know, it's one of those things I feel like in, in Hollywood, and, and not just in Hollywood, but really just in the world. I mean, there are places where women are, are not equals and treated as second-class citizens all the time and, and just disregarded. And so I think it's, it's the plight of women, you know, internationally, really. It's, it's, our, it's our job to um, represent ourselves in the highest light that we possibly can. And, and, you know, and thank God that I've been given this opportunity to play this role. She is as strong as she is. And, and um, I think we've just kind of touched on everything that she can do. I think she can do a lot more. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope I'm a role model, and I hope I'm a good one at that, you know? An excellent one who shoots people. Uh, uh, Jonah, uh, you mentioned Facebook earlier. You guys have a... Wait, can Amy uh, answer that question? Can, I, I was just going to say one other thing. is The great thing that Jonah and Greg have done is also put together an amazing writing staff, and there's some really wonderful female writers on the staff. And yes, yes, yes. I think yes. that that helps a lot. Just quickly, wanted to mention, in, in, uh, uh, in keeping with the strong women of our cast and team here, Taraji sends her best. She is at a charity event in the East Coast and couldn't make it out to join us. She says, hello. And she is always great on the show. Uh, are we wrapping it up? Yeah, we're wrapping, we're wrapping it up, up, I think. Sadly. Uh, thank you guys again for coming out. Uh, we, we, uh, to celebrate the fact that the show is, is now finally online, uh, the sort of profound irony of this show not being available <laughs> on the internet, which we enjoyed for two years. Uh, we have some fun, fun surprises in store. I don't want to tip them completely too much, but, but uh, take a look at our Facebook page. You know, you guys watch us. We want to start watching you guys a little bit without, without the help of the NSA. Um, so keep, keep your eyes peeled. Well, thanks, thanks to everybody for coming. Thanks for the cast Thank and crew. Thanks for a great show.
and uh, you have changed your night. Now you're Tuesdays at 10 on CBS.